Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. And for 18 years I've held fast to that scripture. To reach out to people of all ages, color barriers, no matter what their social background is, I wanted to make it so that anybody who wanted to could come and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. To unite the generations and the denominations, that's exactly what the Lord put in my spirit so many years ago. But in order to put that together, it took a crew of 33 men working literally all day long just to make sure that it was perfect for everybody when they walked through the doors. We tried so hard to please them. And when it was all said and done, we knew that they were ministered to. These guys left the normalcies of their lives, their families, wives, kids, because Jesus says, if you love me, feed my sheep. And each one of these guys loved the Lord. Just to give you an idea of some of the things we've been involved in, we wanted to do an outreach to the city of Detroit. We knew of some of the problems they were having in the inner city, gangs, and violence. So we went to the Pontiac Silver Dome, Pontiac, Michigan, which is just outside of Detroit. We did a concert free of charge, threw open the doors so that anybody who wanted to could come. And over 30,000 young people filled that place to hear Jesus Christ as Lord. But it didn't stop there for us. We wanted to be a witness wherever a witness was needed. And to me, that was at spring break in Daytona Beach, Florida. I don't know if you realize this, but spring break is a parent's worst nightmare. Nearly 400 colleges and high schools empty out across the United States. And they go down to Daytona Beach, and for a few weeks, it's nothing but sex, drugs, rock and roll, AIDS, suicide, rape, you name it, it happens. We set up right on the beach, right between Playboy and MTV, and we preached Jesus to him all night long. Thousands of lives were changed. One of the most violent places in our country is called Fort Apache in the Bronx, appropriately named because of the high crime rate. The police department was worried that the gangs would begin to formulate, so they sent out 200 police officers on foot and on horseback to surround the park in case any problems broke out. Well, there was not one incident reported. As a matter of fact, we had time left over to lead many of the police officers to the Lord that day. The first ever gospel concert of its kind in Barbados. They never had anything like this happen in their country. But they says, pray that it doesn't rain. They're very superstitious. If it rains, they won't come. It did nothing but rain. However, they came with their umbrellas down to the altar to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Wanderers Cricket Stadium, Johannesburg, South Africa. God had put it in my spirit 18 years before to see stadiums filled with people worshiping the Lord. We actually had to go outside of our country to see this happen for the very first time. I went to that stadium when I was on tour in Africa and walked the perimeters of it, claiming it for the glory of God. It was one year later that 50,000 people came to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ set to music. That stadium had never been used for any musical purposes prior to that. Even Nelson Mandela came to that event. But nothing compared to seeing this kind of response to the gospel happen in my home country, the United States of America. God put it in my spirit to do a concert crusade at, of all places, Texas Stadium. The thought of that larger-than-life venue filled with people of all ages worshiping the Lord was just intoxicating. But after 12 months of planning, 4,000 volunteers, and innumerable hours of prayer, on October 22, 1994, 71,132 people filled the enormous and legendary Texas Stadium, making it the largest Christian concert ever. People of all ages will come and worship the Lord at these concerts. Folks that have never felt the presence of God in their lives will come and many for the very first time worship the Lord openly and unashamedly. For nearly two decades, I've never compromised the gospel of Jesus Christ, never taken Jesus out, and I never will.